live from Winnipeg, this is Global News. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Derek, hi. It's that time of year when many Manitobans pack up their bags and fly south for a few days for a warm weather getaway. One Winnipegger has mapped out his trip, but instead of heading south, he'll be enjoying the great northern outdoors. Global's Krista Laganchuk explains. This is why his nickname is Professor Popsicle. It's been two years since Dr. Gordon Giesberg's last trek across Lake Winnipeg. Now he's packing his bags for his fourth expedition, a solo marathon on ice. Giesberg will cross-country ski 450 kilometers from Gimli to Grand Rapids in 26 days and will have to eat between six and 7,000 calories every day to fuel his body. You actually have to train to be able to eat, you know, two or three times more than you usually do. Luckily, uh, we're going through the Christmas season, so I'm going to be, do I'm gonna, starting today, I'm going to be entering a eating uh, training session. And during the journey, he'll devour nuts and butter to increase his fat consumption. But food is only one of his concerns. It's about really how to, how to control uh, water and moisture and vapor and get it out of your clothing and uh, a, lot, a lot of that has to do with you know layering down taking layers off and actually being a little bit cool so you're not sweating into your clothing. A professor of thermophysiology, Giesbrick studies how the human body reacts to extreme temperatures. The January jaunt is merely a training exercise before fulfilling a lifelong dream. I can't think of a more extreme exercise bout in extreme environment than going to the North Pole. Giesbrick is planning his North Pole Top of the World Tour for 2005, but for now he's concentrating on his Lake Winnipeg voyage, which begins next Friday. Crystal Laganchuk, Global News, Winnipeg. And Dr. Giesbrick is hoping his journey will raise money and awareness for the Arthritis Society of Canada. They call him Professor Popsicle. He's one of the world's leading experts on the effects of freezing and hypothermia. He is also known for undertaking his own risky experiments, and his latest test may be his most daring. Here's the CBC's Jamie Strachan. Gordon Giesbrecht is training for the trip of a lifetime. On January 2nd, the 46-year-old will begin a solo trek across Lake Winnipeg. Dubbed the Marathon on Ice, he will attempt to cover 450 kilometers over 26 days, all by himself. It's certainly a, a mental challenge when you are alone and there's nobody to talk to, and uh, it's a big challenge when absolutely everything that is done, you have to do yourself. He's making the trek to see how the body reacts and performs in extreme temperatures. It's also part of his training for an expedition to the North Pole slated for next year. Giesbrecht is no stranger to extreme temperatures. He once spent almost an hour in 36 degree water and he has lowered his body temperature to hypothermia level temperatures over 30 times. To prepare for this trip, Giesbrecht has been lugging a sled full of weights back and forth from work each day for the past three months. When I leave the, the pier at Gimli, I'm not thinking about making it to the other end of the lake. I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, I'm going to camp a few miles from here tonight, and I'll start again tomorrow. He'll stay in touch with a satellite phone. His family will update his journey on a website. For them, his exploits have become familiar. It's normal to me. He's been known to do things out of the ordinary, so we're used to it. Giesbrecht will have some company on his trip. On January 12th, the armed forces plan on dropping in two parachuters as part of a search and rescue exercise. Beyond that, it will just be Professor Popsicle alone in the cold. Jamie Strachan, CBC News, Winnipeg. Weather specialist Marilyn Mackey joins up, and clearly Gordon Giesbrick had the foresight to dress warm for the weather. <laughs> I wish I did. That's it's right. Quite a surprise going outside today. I know it was very cool, but as I mentioned yesterday, we're seeing temperatures again normal where they should be for this time of the year. We've had so much warm weather the past couple of weeks that we got a little bit spoiled, but Professor Giesbrick is going to have to bundle up nice and mm. warm for his training for the next few days. Let's take a look at our current conditions in Winnipeg. We're looking at minus 17 who set out today to test the limits of human endurance. Professor Gordon Giesbrecht is trekking from Gim uh, Gimli to Grand Rapids. It's a 450-kilometer, 26-day odyssey across Lake Winnipeg, and he's going it alone. 
As Global's Crystal Aganchuk reports, the U of M researcher is being tested early. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. Dr. Gordon Giesrich said goodbye to his wife and daughter. And hello to an extra 180 pounds of supplies. For me, it'll really start tonight, you know, when I'm in my first, first uh, campsite and uh, you know, I'm out there. Out there is the closest thing to the Arctic in Manitoba. Over 24,000 square kilometers of ice and snow. Someday, Giesberg would like to attempt an expedition to the North Pole. But for the next 26 days, he'll be somewhere on Lake Winnipeg. You know, you can go for a, a week without seeing any shoreline, so it's really, you know, aside from going up to the Arctic, uh, it's, it's pretty close uh, in both weather and uh, terrain. As he pushes off from Gimli, Giesberg faces a temperature of minus 24 with the wind chill. Tonight, winds are expected to gust up to 60 kilometers an hour. And tomorrow, the high with the wind chill will only hit minus 37. I bought a special tent because I'm by myself. Uh, it's a tent that you can actually set up from the inside. Really sort of when you stop at the end of the day and set up your camp, that's probably the most vulnerable time. Uh, you know, it would be a disaster if your tent blew away. Wrestling with the weather is what Giesbrick does best. A professor of thermophysiology at the U of M, he studies human responses to exercise in extreme environments. You have to concentrate almost all the time trying to maintain a bearing and trying to figure out, okay, how do I see where I want to go in, in this whiteout condition? Conditions he's battled before, but never alone for this long. The 26-day journey will be his fourth and longest. Giesberg's final destination is Grand Rapids. Chris Ligantuk, Global News, Gimli. And we'll be tracking Professor Giesbrecht closely over the next month, checking in regularly via satellite phone. We'll keep you updated on his progress. Now, as Krista mentioned, the professor is studying human physiology in extreme environments. He estimates he'll need to ingest between six and 7,000 calories every day. That's about three times more than normal just to keep up his strength while battling the elements and the extreme distance. Well, your tax dollars hard at work tonight, funding an unusual project by a Winnipeg performance artist. He received a $4,000 grant from the Manitoba Arts Council and spent most of the money. Here you can look at it. Dr. Gordon Giesbrecht left this morning from Gimli's Pier for his Marathons on Ice expedition. He'll be skiing north on Lake Winnipeg, 540 kilometers to Grand Rapids. It should take 26 days. Giesbrecht is studying the effects of human exercise in cold weather. I'm uh, practicing uh, techniques for uh, human-powered travel in extreme environments, and I'd really, you know, love someday to go to the North Pole, and this is a perfect training ground for it. And also, we're raising money for the Joints in Motion uh, program with the Arthritis Society. Quite a day to head out on that. Giesbrecht hopes to take his top-of-the-world tour to the North Pole next year. Good luck on a day like today, that's for sure. If getting in shape is your New Year's resolution, you're not alone. Yeah, that's probably the most vulnerable time. Uh, you know, it would be a disaster if your tent blew away. Wrestling with the weather is what Giesbrecht does best. A professor of thermophysiology at the U of M, he studies human responses to exercise in extreme environments. You have to concentrate almost all the time trying to maintain a bearing and trying to figure out, okay, how do I see where I want to go in, in this whiteout condition? Conditions he's battled before, but never alone for this long. The 26-day journey will be his fourth and longest. Giesbrecht's final destination is Grand Rapids. Chris Ligantuk, Global News, Gimli. Now, we built this animation to help us monitor Professor Giesbrecht's journey. We'll be tracking him closely over the next month, checking in regularly via satellite phone to keep you updated on his progress. As Krista mentioned, the professor is studying human physiology in extreme environments. He estimates he'll need to ingest between six and 7,000 calories every day, about three times more than normal, just to keep up his strength while battling the elements and the extreme distance. Well, the Winnipeg Police Bomb Squad was called into action today, cordoning off a business in the St. James Industrial Park after tonight and tomorrow morning in minus 45 to minus 50 range for the north. Let's check out the current conditions. In Winnipeg, clear skies, winds from the southwest at 20 kilometers an hour. 
and we're sitting at minus 27. As we head into the overnight, partly cloudy skies, and there's a good possibility we could get some flurry activity dropping to minus 29 winds from the south, still at 20 kilometers an hour. And for the next three days, lots of sunshine. Tomorrow's looking much warmer than what we saw today, but it's not going to feel like it with that wind. A high of minus 18, though. Wednesday, minus 20. And for Thursday, the temperature finally starts to pick up with a high of minus 15. I'll be back in just a few moments with your chilly forecast. Okay, we look forward. At least the sunshine, right? Yes, at least the sunshine. <laughs> you still have to wear the sunblock. We'll see you in a few okay. minutes. Well, if you think it's cold inside the city, imagine how cold it must be on Lake Winnipeg tonight with that wind rumbling across the ice. As you saw Friday on Global News, it's been three frigid, blizzard-like days since University of Manitoba professor Dr. Gordon Giesbrecht set out on his marathon and ice expedition from Gimli to Grand Rapids. And as you can see, he's still got a long way to go. It's a 450-kilometer journey on cross-country skis that will take 26 days to complete. Giesbrecht has spent his entire career studying how the human body deals with extreme weather. And there will be no shortage of just that extreme weather for this research expedition. He departed Friday on a solo trek and was immediately faced with blizzard-like conditions. And today, the warmest we'll get for him, ready, about minus 40 with the wind chill. It's funny, every time he goes on an expedition, we have the coldest weather. It's like he's ordered it. So whenever I start getting concerned about the coldness or whatever, I just have to remember if that's what he wants, that's what he likes. Now, most of us will never know, and quite honestly, never want to know what it feels like out on that lake tonight. Most of us, that is, except for Randy Engel, who accompanied Dr. Giesbrecht on a four-man expedition across Lake Winnipeg back in 2001. Randy, thanks for joining us. Let's face it, it is freezing cold right now. What can you tell us about what Dr. Giesbrecht is going through out there tonight? Well, you know, Gord is uh, he's very well prepared. He's, uh, he knows what he's doing when he's out there. Uh, the cold, uh, he's, as he's experiencing it right now, um, he can deal with because he's very well prepared and he's dressed for it. Uh, the wind is the big thing. The, the wind is going to be constantly beating down on him the whole time. And you got to remember, he is traveling north, so he has those prevailing north winds the whole time. Well, he's certainly got a tough task at hand. When you made the trek, you were accompanied by four guys. He's going it alone this time. Isn't that dangerous? Um, it's dangerous if you're not prepared. Uh, he is, he's prepared. He knows what he's doing. Um, you know, he has a satellite phone, so if he does have an emergency of some sort, uh, he can get help in that. The big thing with Gord being alone, he really doesn't have anybody to rely on. When we went with the four of us, uh, you know, you'd work, you work, work, work the whole time, and, and you're battling the cold, you're battling, you know, the fatigue. Uh, and yet, at the end of the day, if you weren't the person that was um, cooking, you could actually get in the tent, get in your sleep bag, and almost relax while someone made food for you, and then you could sleep. Gord does not have that opportunity. His mind is going his body is going, he's, he's just basically always on for a month. Let's talk about that. I'm wondering the elements. What's the biggest challenge he's facing? Is it the cold? Is it the extreme wind? Or is it the distance? You know what? It's, it's a combination, to be honest. It's really that combination because it's relentless. He, you know, you might get through it for a day, you might get through it for two days. That cold, uh, you know, it beats away at you physically, mentally, it beats away at your equipment. And, and it's a funny thing because it knows it will win over time. Well, we, cer it. we certainly wish him the best. I know you're in his corner. We've been speaking with outdoor adventurer Randy Engel, who's made this jump before. Randy, we appreciate your time today. Thanks, Derek. Complete coverage of today's top stories. You're watching from Gimli to Grand Rapids. That's straight north up Lake Winnipeg. Dr. Giesbrecht is traveling with 150 kilograms of food and equipment, including a satellite phone that we contacted overnight. Global's Krista Laganchuk has been tracking the professor in his marathon on ice. She joins us from the newsroom. And Krista, first of all, how is he doing considering all that terrible weather we got this week? Well, Derek, Dr. Giesbrook lives for this kind of weather. In fact, he had been hoping for lower temperatures. And Mother Nature definitely delivered. One of the reasons for his expedition was to test out his equipment and see how it would hold up in the Arctic. Well, it was, uh, it was the first night, and uh, I don't know, the wind must have been at least 40, maybe 50 miles an hour. I stopped a little early and set it up, uh, and it was a good thing because just when I got in, the wind really came up. The wind didn't just about blow down, or the tent didn't just about blow down, but it was, uh, you know, certainly tested it. Good thing I had it anchored well. It was just a, a bit of a harrowing night, just... Uh, uh, trying to cook supper while the tent was uh, blowing almost sideways was pretty interesting. 
because the water or the ice got so cold it started cracking and uh, you could hear these big deep cracks uh, all across the lake for hours and, and uh, it was, uh, was kind of eerie but uh, really interesting. What's really surprised me is just uh, how good a time I've had during the daytime uh, thinking about uh, different things in nature, the different uh, ice uh, sculptures and, and snow formations and just even looking at how the ice is cracked at so many different levels in some places. Well, the professor has a lot more time to observe nature up close and on ice. Since leaving Gimli last Friday, Professor Giesbrook has logged over 80 kilometers. He's setting up camp north of Hecla Island tonight, and he's coming up on the Narrows. If all goes according to plan, he'll continue his trek due north and arrive in Grand Rapids on January 28th. Well, an amazing guy, and to think, Krista, this is just a warm-up for a possible North Pole ascent. Thanks for keeping us up to date. Global's Krista Laganchuk reporting live tonight. Well, today's timing wasn't lost on anyone. On the same week, the American border slammed shut indefinitely, and DNA tests confirmed Alberta's second case of mad cow disease. Manitoba's cat stores overnight demanded cat. The University of Manitoba researcher began his marathon on ice. Dr. Gordon Giesbrecht is trekking over 400 kilometers due north, straight up Lake Winnipeg, and alone. On Sunday, he crossed a winter road near Pine Dock at the Narrows of Lake Winnipeg, and that's where Global's Crystal Agancha caught up with this amazing Winnipeg adventurer. Thousands of kilometers of ice and snow, an endless blend of white on gray, with the exception of... For 12 days, Dr. Gordon Giesbrick has been alone living on Lake Winnipeg. This past weekend, his path crossed a nice road. Because of this uh, coming up to this road and this break day on day 10 here, provide an opportunity for me to test some gear that I wouldn't ever test on a, on a full long length uh, expedition. And there's a big, a lot of gear will last you for a weekend or three or four days, but if you use it for 10 days, it's a completely different story. For the first 10 days, he tested a new tent, sleeping bag and clothing. He'll keep the clothes, but the rest of the gear is being replaced. I was uh, setting up setting up my tent, and uh, it's one of the interesting things about it. It only has two poles, and they set and it sets up from the inside. And uh, one of the poles broke, and uh, you know, within 60 seconds, the second ball pole snapped. I hear it's going to pick up again next week. Is that right? Yeah, that okay, is. Oh, pick perfect. up a little bit. And, uh, the road gave residents the chance to chat with Dr. Giesbrook about his adventure and how he's been holding up during the minus 40 degree temperatures earlier this month. Uh, the ends of my fingers are numb. Uh, they always are because you're, you're, they're getting cold so many times throughout the day when you take your mitts off to do things, but that usually happens. Uh, but I haven't got any frostbite or anything like that. Walking along the shoreline here, beautiful uh, snow-covered spruce trees uh, against the limestone uh, cliffs. Those have been beautiful. Uh, I've looked at, uh, you know, different clear areas where the ice, uh, where you can see the ice and you can see the cracks and just the way the wind has made the snow go in different ways. And then the ice ridges are really neat. For the first 130 kilometers, Dr. Giesbrook could see shore. But since passing this point at Pine Dock on Monday, the next 290 kilometers will just be Dr. Giesbrook alone with his thoughts. I think about, uh, I think about my job a bit. I think about my family a lot. I think about different kind of pictures I want to take, uh, and uh, I just I think about the route, and uh, you know sometimes I'll go an hour and a half between breaks and I'll stop and I'll realize that I haven't thought about anything. The curious weren't the only ones taking the opportunity to meet up with Dr. Giesbrook. One of his close friends made the drive from Winnipeg to exchange equipment and make him a meal. This was his last face-to-face -face contact with another human being for over two weeks. Well, I understand it's going to get colder next week. I think that'll be a challenge uh, again, but that's why I scheduled this thing for January in, in Manitoba. Uh, we expect to have some cold weather. Environment Canada is expecting temperatures to drop to minus 35 with the wind chill. Crystal Lagancha at Global News, Pine Dock, Manitoba. An amazing guy and a great story. Now, since Krista caught up with him on Sunday, Professor giesbrecht has been making good time. With the longest part of his expedition still ahead, the professor has completed just over one-third of his marathon on ice, 
He's moved through the Narrows and Pine Dock and is pushing out onto Lake Winnipeg for the final two-thirds of his journey. He expects to reach Grand Rapids on January 27th, and of course, we will keep you posted. Case of the jitters on the markets today. Now in his marathon trek, it's been quite a journey, is almost over. University of Manitoba cold weather researcher Dr. Gordon Giesbrecht is set to arrive in Grand Rapids tomorrow. A long haul indeed. The human physiology professor will finally cross the finish line on his 450-kilometer solo journey, a marathon on ice that began in Gimli back on January 2nd. Dangerously high wind chills forced Giesbrecht to huddle in his tent for two days last week, putting his trek behind schedule. But luckily, some clear conditions and hard-packed snow put the journey back on track over the weekend. The expedition took Dr. Giesbrecht north, up Lake Winnipeg, into the wind much of the time and straight into a colder than normal January. His only company for most of the journey? A tennis ball named Wilson, named after Tom Hanks' imaginary companion in the movie Castaway. Wilson and Dr. Giesbrecht will be greeted by his family tomorrow in Grand Rapids, more than three weeks after his expedition began. A broad-based rally stateside sent the U.S. market surging today, but the gold and base metal marathon on ice. Watch Global News weekdays at 5.30 and weeknights at 10.30. Destination. As he approached the town of Grand Rapids, Dr. Giesbrick was joined on the ice by his wife and daughter. Waiting on the shore were many residents that came out to see the university prof, nicknamed Professor Popsicle, complete his trek. Overall, Dr. Giesbrick traveled some 380 kilometers. I had a couple of days there where it was just, every step was just slogging. Not only just walking through soft snow yourself, but also have to pulling a sled through it, and it was... I, uh, those days I was wondering how in the world I was ever going to do this because at that point I had the distance from Winnipeg to Brandon to go. And we'll have more on Giesbrecht's amazing solo journey tomorrow night, only right here on Global News. I bet you he's excited that he won't have to spend another cold, yes. cold night out on another Lake Winnipeg. Another cold snap is beginning, probably the coldest one we've see, seen so far this winter season. All beginning tonight, dropping to my... Professor Popsicle. We were there when Professor Gordon Giesbrecht departed, on, uh, departed from Gimli on his 26-day odyssey, a solo expedition nearly 400 kilometers up Lake Winnipeg. Global News was also there to greet him yesterday in Grand Rapids as he completed his marathon on ice. As Global's Crystal Aganchuk reports, the cold weather researcher had plenty of time to study his favorite subject. 26 days and over 380 kilometers. Part of the deal was to finish really healthy and really strong, which I think I am. With the exception of some numb fingers and toes, Dr. Gordon Giesbrook completed his Marathons on Ice expedition yesterday afternoon and was joined on the ice by his wife and daughter for the last kilometer. Well, that was a nice long walk. <laughs> A walk many residents of Grand Rapids came out to see firsthand. This is really exciting. It's nice to see somebody show up here. Dr. Giesbrick wasn't sure he would even show up here after facing days of strong winds and whiteouts. I call it the pit of despair. It was terrible. It was just soft snow and every step was hard work. But his hard work paid off. Hey, bud. Thanks for coming. We've been following this progress all the way from uh, Gimli and on Global News, and so we just wanted to meet him when he came in. Dr. Giesbrick came in right on schedule, even after the elements forced him to spend two days stranded in his tent, where he had no choice but to use the very survival skills he teaches at the university. The issue was to come home safe and uh, to come home strong, and I've, I've been able to do that, and, uh, you know, with all the extra mental... Um, strengths required for that it's been a very rewarding experience an experience he shared with this northern community during a lunch held in his honor we've gone up here in the north in the cold and uh, we're interested to know a lot of the things that happen that uh, we take as everyday normal things without explanation so it was uh, interesting to for uh, for the experiments that he's doing before leaving the town of 1000 the university professor made a stop at grand rapids school to do what he does best, share his knowledge about how the human body reacts in cold weather. Crystal Gangett, Global News, Grand Rapids. Now, part of Dr. Giesbrecht's Marathon and Ice Expedition was to promote arthritis awareness and raise some money for research. If you'd like to make a donation, you can by logging on to www.arthritis.ca. All right, stay with us. Still to come on Global News, it's an online shopper's worst nightmare, being scammed on eBay.